Hello, everybody out there. I, before we get to our briefing, I'll just let us introduce ourselves. I'm Steve Melton. I'm the chapter leader for Citizens Climate Lobby on the Missouri side. And Jennifer? Yeah, hi, I'm Jennifer Brown. I'm, I'm the chapter leader on the Kansas side. Um, and, and, um, <laughs> oh, and, and what we're going to do now is we're, we're going to put on some slides so you can see our slides. We have a brief slideshow. And if you have Q&As, um, you know, just put them in the chat or wherever and we will um, uh, and we'll answer the questions as we go along. So we are Citizens Climate Lobby and I want to thank uh, as we start off um, Bob Grove and all the great guys at the Climate Council of Greater Kansas City and also KKFI for for giving us time to talk about what what we do at CCL. You see on there our web address, our Facebook address, and that QR code is will take you to our website. Um, a little bit about myself. I'm a former military officer, served in the Army for 27 years, and taught at the Command and General Staff College for 12. And um, that's where I began to learn about climate change and uh, how awful it will be if we don't do something to stop it. And so I want to stop it. Um, you know, I'm 70 years old and, I, you know, I've still got a few good years left and I want to stop climate change for my kids, uh, for my grandkids and for Jennifer's kids, who she talked about so eloquently the other day. Jennifer, you want to give us a little, little about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I just got involved with Citizens Climate Lobby. Um, again, real similar, out of concern for my and all kids' future. Um, I just, I really feel like it's um, a solution-oriented group. And um, I, I feel like um, if I'm going to put my time into something, it's going to be something like this that's working on really focusing on those big emissions numbers. Good. Okay. So Jennifer, I, I think, you know, we, we scripted this out. I think this is your slide, is it not? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So just generally speaking, um, what is the Citizens Climate Lobby? Um, we got a picture here. This is, this is us going to, um, to DC every year. We take about 1,500 of us and go and lobby. We are an international and nonpartisan and nonprofit organization. We're grassroots and volunteer driven with over 200,000 200, US members. We're in every state and just about every voting district. Um, we work toward legislative and free market solutions to cli the climate crisis. And um, the climate provisions in the 2022 Inflation Reduction Act which is the biggest climate legislation we've ever passed as a nation, um, are partly a result of our lobbying efforts over the past few years. Yeah. Go to the next slide. Yeah, and and I'm in that crowd someplace. I think I'm right where, you know, it's kind of in the middle there. And I think this is my slide. So I don't know if you've seen this slide, but this is from the latest uh, uh, intergovernmental a panel on climate change a report that came out just a few weeks ago. And th this kind of explains the situation that we're in right now. The caption reads, the extent to which current and future generations will experience a hotter and different world depends on the choices now and in the near future. And you see here in the, in the color code across the, the top, uh, the historical climate, you know, what it was at the beginning of the industrial era and how it's gotten hotter up until now, which look at the big bar 2020. And if you want to read the codes, here it is. This is like cooler zero degrees change from the 19th century levels and four degrees is the dark stuff up in here. And you you can see that if we do everything we can possibly do <laughs> as soon as we can do it. And this is, this is this bottom bar in here, the very low, that we can stabilize 
the climate at 1.5 degrees centigrade, two degrees centigrade, and that's that's a lot. That's that's um, you know like three or four degrees Fahrenheit, and our kids will have a pretty good future on the planet. The planet will be habitable. But if we don't do anything, which means we just keep on going our merry way, we will very soon in the mid-century get up into these purples, which are three, three and a half, four degrees centigrade. And that's an unlivable world. I mean, when it gets that hot, you'll have entire areas of the planet that are unlivable for human beings. You'll have massive die-offs of crops, species, you know, species of plants and animals, oceans, uh, sea levels will be rising. It will be chaos on this planet if we let it get that hot. So in the bottom, you see human generations. And like I, I'm I'm on the bottom. I was born in 1952. So I'm like these old guys down here, and I'm 70 years old right now. But we've lived in a pretty favorable climate. But you know, here's my children. They're in the middle bar, and these are my grandchildren. I mean, they're born in a in a climate that's already heated, and by the time they're my age, the planet could be unlivable unless we do something. I mean, that's just it. It will be unlivable. So I got these grandkids. I got three of them. And they're really great little kids. They're like two years old or three or four. And so they're on this bar and you know, I will make sure to do everything I can while I still have productive years left to make sure that they do not share this fate at the top that they're gonna live in a habitable planet. I, I don't need to play golf. I don't need to go see the world again. I need to work on climate change and we all do now. You know what this means to stay on this lot bottom uh, bar is we have to decarbonize our economy. We have to quit using fossil fuels. We have to be carbon neutral by 2050, and we got to reduce our CO2 emissions by 60% by 2035. That's what all these scientists say, and 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 they're right, and we just got to do it. And so that's what citizens' climate lobby is all about. Let's do it. Let, let's make it happen. So. So. Uh, Jennifer. Yeah. Uh, so system climate lobby's primary goal is carbon fee and dividend. And so. Carbon fee and dividend means just that with a carbon fee, corporate polluters, meaning fossil fuel companies, would have to pay a fee for the damage that their carbon pollution is going to do to their our environment once it's burned. And so the money collected from the carbon fee would go back to the American people in the form of a monthly payment to use as we choose, called a dividend. Get it? Carbon fee and dividend. Um, as many of you know, the goal that climate scientists are directing us to is to be net carbon neutral by 2050. Studies on carbon pricing consistently show that it significantly drops greenhouse gas emissions and is an integral part of getting to that goal on time. That's because putting a price on carbon means that the polluting choice is going to become the costly choice and the green choice is going to become the least expensive one. For individuals, for corporations, for the government, economics speak to everyone. And so pricing carbon um, is one way to get us all going together in the green direction. Um, maybe one of the most important parts of pricing carbon also involves um, having a border adjust. <clears throat> also means that it has a, a border adjustment. Um, that's basically a tax on any imported products from countries that do not have that same uh, carbon pricing. So it's, in a nutshell, a financial incentive for all countries to start pricing carbon. Um, this would lead to reduce greenhouse gas emissions on a worldwide basis, which is really what we need. Um, carbon pricing also saves lives. 
reducing fossil fuels reduces local air pollution as well as the worldwide uh, effects of the climate issue, of course. Recent polls tell us that cutting carbon emissions would avoid close to 1.4 million premature American deaths through 2040 and 4.5 million through 2070, as compared to a business as usual pathway. And those longer lives would of course be healthier because as, as a result of people re, uh, breathing cleaner air. Finally, we know fossil fuels come with volatile fuel uh, price fluctuations. Clean energy puts us beyond that and frees us from dependence on foreign dictators as well. You can move to the next slide, Steve. Okay, is, is this mine or is this yours? Oh, uh, that's you. This is me, okay. Well, it's almost too big, so let's start at the top. Well, who supports carbon pricing? Well, all the major scientific bodies, uh, like the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the US National Academies of Science, Engineering and Medicine, they support carbon pricing, they want it. The economists want it. They say it is, as Janet Yellen says down here, the most of a carbon tax offers the most cost-effective lever to reduce carbon emissions at the scale and speed that is necessary. Our trading partners, the European Union and Canada, already have carbon pricing. Um, they've already enacted it. In fact, if you lived in Canada today, they have carbon fee and dividend, like Jennifer was talking about on the previous slide. If you live in Canada today, you'd get your dividend check deposited into your into your bank account. You know, from all so because you know up there, if you have a big carbon footprint, you pay. You know, and if you've got a small carbon footprint, you get money. So that that's great. The European Union just yesterday the, said that they're going to do these carbon border adjustments. Um, uh, beginning uh, in, in a couple years, and that all these firms who want to imp export to Canada from around the world from countries that don't have carbon pricing are going to pay the carbon price tax in, in the European Union. A lot of business groups, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce support carbon pricing, climate heroes like James Hansen and Paul Hawken, billionaires like Elon Musk and Bill Gates, and of course, the city of Kansas City and Climate, Ca Climate Action KC support it as well. And, you know, here's the mayor up here, our mayor, you know, in Kansas City, uh, Quentin Lucas, and he was one of the sponsors of KC's endorsement of carbon pricing. And of course, over here is Mike Kelly. He's now the uh, presiding commissioner down in uh, Johnson County, and he supports it as well. So, you know, this has been looked at by a lot of people, uh, not just here in the United States. This isn't a fringe <laughs> idea coming from some small think tank on the left. This is being embraced widely throughout, uh, throughout the world. It will come. It will come. Someday, we're going to have carbon pricing in the United States, and it's going to be sooner than later. Okay, Jennifer, I think this so, is your slide. Yeah, so um, moving on um, from carbon pricing, um, Citizens Climate Lobby has recently added some new areas of focus to our agenda. Um, one of those is uh, trying to electrify America's buildings. Did you know that nearly three quarters of Americans' buildings and homes use fossil fuel for heating, to cook food, or to heat water? Um, electricity is a more efficient choice and simply switching to it saves money. As our electric grid moves away from coal, the carbon footprint of your home will be further reduced. Um, if all buildings were electrified, it could reduce, um, electrified and well weatherized, it could reduce America's annual carbon pollution by 15%. The Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 uh, that Biden signed in rebates homeowners up to $14,000 for weatherization and electrification, and it's available for 10 years. You can go to the Rewiring America calculator 
just Google it and it can you enter a couple of facts and it will tell you about what home rebates apply to you right now. Rewiring America calculator. You can go to the next one, Steve. Okay. And and for those of you who can't go, we don't want you to go to the website right now, but this is what it looks like in New York. And there will be similar programs in Missouri and Kansas. Okay, and, and they're being devised right now. But for instance, if you look over on the right of the slide, it talks about a heat pump. You know, if you take out your, when your heater goes bad, your gas heater goes bad, or your air conditioner goes bad, instead of replacing it with, with another air conditioner or gas heater, replace it with a heat pump. You will get, if you do that, an $8,000 upfront discount on the heat pump and a $2,000 tax credit for having installed it. Now that's like $10,000 off of the heat pump. And that's sort of the basic gist here. If you wanna electrify America and electrify the households, the rule of thumb is when your gas burning appliance dies, and they all do, don't replace it with another gas appliance, replace it with an electric appliance. When your gas car, gasoline powered car dies, don't replace it with another gasoline car, replace it with an electric vehicle. Because like here, over here in the garage part on the, on the left, if you get it, if you buy an electric vehicle, the government will give you a $7,500 tax credit for new electric vehicles. And not only that, they'll give you money to put the, you know, to run the wiring out to your garage so you can have the, the, the charger that, that you need for the electric vehicle. You can get electric water heaters with, as you see at the bottom, with an upfront discount and a tax credit. You can get, if you look at the top, insulation, uh, you know, for your attic, you can get rooftop solar, a 30% tax credit. I mean, in every room in your house, there's money that the federal government is, and this is going to give you in tax credits, or will come through the state of Missouri or Kansas as a, as a, a point of sale discount to help you electrify your house. So this is really important because in the Kansas City area, about a third of our CO2 emissions come from our houses, the way we heat and cool our houses. Okay. So okay. this one's yours. So um, another one of the uh, newer focuses for CCL is on trees. And there's a lot of different ways to think about this, uh, but I'll just kind of highlight a few. Uh, America's forests pull 12% of carbon out of the air for us annually, reducing the impacts of climate change. By protecting and expanding our forests, we could grow that number to 22% by 2030. Over half of America's for, uh, forest land is privately owned. Today, landowners have few incentives to manage their forests in a way that benefits our climate. We should provide financial incentives that encourage the protection of forest land. The Growing Our Climate Solutions Bill uh, that we recently helped uh, sign in uh, does some of this by helping connect farmers, ranchers, and forest landowners with the environmental credit market markets as a financial incentive to make climate-friendly choices on the land. Uh, another area involving uh, forests is that the world is currently losing 25 million acres of forest per year due to deforestation, mostly in Brazil and Indonesia. People are converting the previously forested land to grow crops and livestock to sell on the international market. We need to prohibit the importation of products from land that has been illegally de uh, deforested. There is a pending bill that CCL is supporting called the Forest Act. It is uh, S-2950, I believe it's in the house too, would reduce illegal logging globally by restricting, restricting the sale of goods 
originating from illegally forested land. Um, another area to think about is each year, 12,000 Americans die prematurely from heat related causes. Planting trees is the cheapest, fastest, and most effective way to directly lower temperatures and save lives in cities. Due to historic discriminatory policies, trees are often more sparse in neighborhoods with low income families and people of color. Today, these neighborhoods can experience temperatures of more than 15 degrees hotter than wealthier neighborhoods in the same city on a hot day. And the people who live in them are less likely to have air conditioning. Trees make outdoor and indoor spaces more livable and should be planted in areas that need them the most. Trees also reduce air conditioning usage and the corresponding strain on electrical grids during a heat wave, reducing the chances of a power outage at a catastrophically hot time. Finally, trees from forests can be sustainably harvested in a way that keeps carbon locked inside the wood products instead of being released into the air. Homes and buildings made with wood release up to 30% fewer carbon emissions during construction than buildings made with concrete, steel, or plastic. We support policies that increase the use of durable wood products in construction. Americans are divided on many things, but we love our trees. 90% of Americans are supportive of more trees to absorb carbon emissions. Healthy forests are the place to start fostering bipartisan collaboration on climate solutions. Next slide, please. Is, is, is this, you know, can I add something on this one, John? Yeah, please. Is it here on the Missouri side, you know, in KC Mo, the city council recently passed a, tr a tree protection ordinance, a forest protection ordinance uh, to stop the, the clear cutting of forests by developers in Kansas City and try to get the forest cover coverage in KC Mo up to, I think it's 35%. And this is their first ever tree protection ordinance in, in, in KCMO. And we lobbied hard to get this happen. I testified in front of the KCMO uh, city council uh, twice. A lot of CCL members here on the Missouri side did as well. And we wrote our council members and the, and the mayor and we got this thing passed. And, and that's just tremendous. So. It isn't like CCL is doing stuff just nationally. We're working locally to get these, these uh, uh, you know, you know on, on these lines of effort that we're talking about. What, one of the big things we're, uh, we're doing nationally is going to be in the 2023 Farm Bill. The 2023 Farm Bill. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine? But they only do the Farm Bill once every five years. And the Farm Bill is what you know, if you're a farmer or a rancher or a forester, you know, that's what you care about is what's in the farm bill, because that's how you're going to get paid for the next five years. And what we're trying to get in the farm bill, and I think we're going to get it, is like Jennifer Brown's, uh, Jennifer said, is we're, we're going to try to get compensation, carbon payments for farmers, ranchers, and foresters who preserve the forest to use regenerative farming and ranching techniques, get them paid for the carbon that they sequester in the ground um, and in their trees, you know, through their good practices. You know, the, the, the money in the farm bill doesn't always have to go to big corporations doing the wrong thing. It can go, you know, to our, family farmers and ranchers and foresters who are trying to do the right thing. So, you know, we, I hope we're successful. Um, another legislative <laughs> priority, permitting reform. Believe it or not, I had never even heard of permitting reform uh, like a year ago, you know, who, who knew? But the graph on the right kind of shows the whole question, uh, the whole story. The bar on the left is what we have installed as electricity now. And you can see that there's some solar, there's some wind at the bottom, a lot of gas, a lot of coal, some nuclear hydro and some others. And that's all the electricity in the United States right now. 
if you look at the at the right, all that solar, all that wind, all that offshore wind, all that storage, you know, these are all projects that are funded, pri funded by private industry, just standing in the queue, waiting to be uh, permitted because, you know, they got to be permitted by, you know, Missouri, by the, you know, Missouri um, Public Works, Public Services Department, you know, there's just this backlog of all this permitting. So the big deal in Congress this year, one of the big deals is to look at this entire approval of process and expedite it so that we can work off this backload. There's enough clean energy projects right now to replace all the dirty electricity that, that's, that's generated. And, you know, this is extremely important because if we don't get these projects built, you know, we're on that top bar. Remember back to the first slide, the IPCC slide, we go back to the top bar. If we keep on burning coal and natural gas for electricity, we're going to fry this planet. And so we need to get these clean energy projects built. So that's yeah. a big deal for us. Can I just add, I mean, Surely. it's it's built and, and running by before 2050. Um, so the money's out there, you know, and and the projects are coming, but it's it's getting them done in a the time frame that science demands for us. Yeah. I mean, you look you look at those two bars, there's enough solar and wind energy to replace all the coal and all the gas electricity it, it with by 150%, you know, it's just tremendous story. And, and, you know, it, uh, you know, we, we've just got to get the roadblocks out of the way and make it happen. That, that's what we've got to do. So regulatory reform is going to be big in this Congress. Okay. Is this your this your slide? Can be. Okay, go ahead. What, what can you do? Um, of course, work for climate action on all levels of the government, with whatever whatever area you're most comfortable with, with city, state, or national. Um, comprehensively reduce your own carbon footprint, and you know we've mentioned a lot of the areas where where it um, matters the most clean electricity, electric heating, energy efficient buildings and clean transportation. And of course, always vote climate because um, you know that that's just terribly important to get to get these uh, these things moving forward. I would I would add to that um, you know if you want to to help through CCL um, there is a site you can go to. It's cclusa.org forward slash text. Text. You can get a monthly climate action from CCL to do as well. Mm -hmm. I'll put it in the chat. Right, and the vote climate. I mean, that, that's the reality. You know, we, we talk about the Inflation Reduction Act as being the largest climate bill in history of the world, and it was, but it passed by one vote in the Senate and just a few votes in the mm -hmm. House. You yeah, know, we talk right. about the, the tree ordinance, you know, it, it could have used a few more votes on the city council. It would have been a stronger ordinance, you know. We talk about the, the building codes, the new energy efficient building codes. Again, you know, small margins. If you want, if you want the government to start working hard on climate change, you're gonna to have to start voting for candidates who who are serious about addressing climate change and willing to do the hard work necessary to basically shut down the fossil fuel companies. I mean, that's that's what we're talking about. And you know, obviously the fossil fuel companies are spending a lot of money trying to maintain their profits. But, you know, I think our children and our grandchildren are more important than profits for the fossil fuel companies. You know, they, you know, they got us to where we are, but <laughs> 
we just got to quit riding that horse and get on, start using renewable energy. I mean, well, that, I have to say, really... I, I do think they're going to reinvent themselves. I don't think they're just going to go away, you know, so, but you're right. You're absolutely right. You know, it's got to yeah. happen. Yeah, well, they, they'll reinvent themselves if they're forced to, right? Yes. We'll see. And, and, you know, we're talking about we're talking about the people who make a lot of money. Obviously, the workers will be taken care of, you know, they're for, the, you know, the workers will be taken care of. There are more jobs in the clean energy economy than there are in the fossil fuel economy. So the workers will be taken care of. Great paying long lasting jobs. Right, right. So we're all in this together, and we'll all we'll all work our way through it. Um, we're we're I'm, I'm neither optimistic nor pessimistic that we'll do it. There's just work that has to be done, and we just got to do the work. That that's the reality.